I'm DJ Ware, and this is the Cyber Gizmo. Today I want to talk a little bit about some of the more essential aspects of our Linux systems. And these have to do with things like virtual consoles, virtual terminals, pseudo terminals, and yeah, even real terminals, physical devices, and modems too for that matter. So I'm gonna explain how they work, how they differ from each other, and what makes each of those unique. So I think, I th I think, I think this is probably one of the biggest areas of challenge for the early Unix administrators who had to deal with this overly complicated and completely ridiculous way of connecting terminals and terminal devices to a server. So to start with, I think we should talk about what's right about it. So we have today we have virtual consoles. Virtual consoles, or VCs, allow you to run multiple command line sessions simultaneously with your Linux machine. These act as independent screens or terminals, if you will, and you can easily switch between them using keyboard shortcuts even if you're running inside of a GUI, like GNOME, KDE, XFCE, MATE, Cinnamon, doesn't matter. Uh, you should be able to access these uh, devices from wherever. However, the way to get into them is different. So, yeah, and and on Fedora, for example, you have to use the Control-Alt sequence, and then you press your function keys. Now, you may see people talking about, well, just do an Alt-Control-F1 on Fedora, that's not going to work because alt control f1 returns from the virtual console so does control alt f2 why do you have two keys for this well alt on this is fedora now on control alt f1 will take you from your virtual console and return you to your login screen on your graphical user interface that could be SDDM, that could be GDDM, that could be a number of login mechanisms, and that's where it goes. So it only works when you're at the login screen. If you're inside of your X Windows or your Wayland session, then you have to use Control Out F2. Is this confusing enough yet? <laughs> and that is used to return from your virtual console to Windows, uh, to your X Windows, or to your uh, Wayland. Now, can you accidentally hit a Control Alt F1 even when you're un you're in we're running already and you're GUI? Yeah, you can, but nothing's going to happen because again, you have to be up on SDDM for that to work. So, sorry for the confusion, but that's just the way it works on Fedora. Your distro may be totally different. You might use Alt F1, and that might be your first virtual console. They're all a little bit different, so you need to check with the manual and the documentation that comes with your distro to see which key sequence works for your particular flavor of Linux. That generally leaves you the F3 through F4 keys to be able to get to virtual consoles. So F3 will be your first, F4, the second, third, fourth, but, but, on <laughs> Fedora, Hitting a, a Control Alt F3 will take you to TTY3, 4 will take you to TTY4, 5 will take you to TTY5, 6 will take you to TTY7, or 6. What about the term virtual terminal? You may hurt, hear that. Sometimes it's used synonymously with virtual console, but they're not the same thing. Uh, a virtual terminal is essentially an abstraction. It's a program that communicates with the Linux kernel. When you're using a virtual console, you are accessing it. You're accessing your Linux kernel through a virtual terminal. The virtual terminal is your bridge between your keyboard and your screen and the actual kernel. <laughs> what are pseudo terminals? Pseudo terminals are identified by PTY, and those are often used, not always, but often used for remote or program-driven communications. In other words, 
You'll see PTYs used by things like the K Council and KDE. It you may or may not see PTYs used in other programs because it's dependent on how the program is written. However, you will always see PTYs that are used by SSH if it's on Linux. Uh, if it's on some other device like a Mac, no, it, they use TTY001 or something to do that. But but uh, yeah, the Mac doesn't. The Mac used to have uh, support for virtual consoles. They have gotten rid of that. So what about real terminals? Can you still use those? Yes, you can. Uh, there are no zero terminals or zero laptops and machines that actually come with RS-232 or RS-422 ports. If you want to use a physical terminal, you can, but it requires something called a USB to RS, either 232 or RS-422 device. If you happen to have a terminal that will do USB communications, great. Uh, yeah, you have a, a fairly recent one. Uh, who uses that? Who uses physical terminals today? Well, believe it or not, your amateur radio people still do. And why? Well, they have a system that they use for emergencies called the, the uh, ARRL messaging system which is basically a store and forward uh, and it uses packet radio. It's used to set up uh, communications at the, uh, at the locations that are affected by either a tornado, a hurricane, a flood, um, a fire, an earthquake, anything like that that requires first responders to be in areas without communication support. So your cell phone towers are down, your landlines are down so you, and, and there's no way to get communications in and out of the area. So let's talk about Getty for a moment. You may have seen Getty or a Getty, uh, an A in front of the word G-E-T-T-Y. Getty is used to set up the physical terminal uh, in, in terms of what it needs to communicate end to end. So in, in a virtual console, it doesn't have to do much other than set up what what uh, what virtual terminal interface it's going to listen on. And that's it. Uh, and then once you connect to it, Getty will display a login prompt and then transfer control to login. That's an application that allows you to log in with your user ID and password and then gain access to the shell. That's as far as it goes. You won't be able to run your GUI through that. But chances are if you're you're down in that uh, area already, you have a good reason for being there, and it probably is because your GUI is no longer working. Like mine wasn't a couple of days ago. I actually had to use this in order for it to work. So each terminal had its own quirky set of settings. That makes them work, and it's involved. <laughs> you, uh, I mean, I remember seeing Linux admins or Unix admins just being surrounded by a pile of wires and a pile of cut wires on the floor as they were attempting to hook up one of these, let's say it was a new device they'd never seen before. They usually would have a book open and, a, and they would have a working terminal up and working because you needed a working terminal to hook up a new one because you had to define your term cap, you had to define the protocols to, on both ends, and they had to be the same, the speed, the word length, the parity type, all that had to be the same for it to communicate. They weren't. Nothing worked. If you're using uh, a virtual console, that the reason you're using it is to reduce the load on your system because these are very lightweight. Remember, these were the, this interface was developed back in the day when Linux machines and Unix machines didn't have a lot of memory. So yeah, it wasn't unusual to find, you know, four meg systems and yeah, four, meg, four megabytes of memory or eight megabytes of memory. So you didn't have a lot of, a, a lot of memory to begin with to be wasting. Pseudo terminals are a great way to, uh, to access remote systems that you want your communications encrypted for. And that would be through SSH to do that. Again, like I said, you may also find pseudo terminals used by K Console uses them on my version of, KD, of KDE. So that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
try try them out. Uh, try out your virtual councils. Check with your manual uh, and your distribution documentation to see how yours actually works. Uh, you can always try Alt F1, Alt F2, Alt F3 until you see a, a prompt. If you don't want to miss the next tech uh, video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button until you'll get a reminder of the next video. I hope to see you then, and bye for now. <laughs>